Hey, what's up guys? So I recently just moved halfway across the country and while packing I found this old plastic tub. This old tub is chocked full of a bunch of Pokemon stuff from my childhood and God only knows what else. Back in the 90s I actually lived in Michigan, which is weird because that's where I just moved to. As a kid I remember the very moment Pokemon took over the world. I remember watching the very first episode of the Pokemon anime. I also remember growing up playing the Pokemon Game Boy games, as well as the card game with all my friends and neighborhood kids. Just like every other 90s baby. But unfortunately, before I could complete my quest of becoming a Pokemon master, I moved away to Arkansas, leaving all of my fellow Pokemon trainers behind. This box is like opening a portal to another time, like a literal 1990s time capsule. I haven't opened this tub since probably 2004, so I figured why not do an unboxing video? I'm just as curious as you. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so let's pop this bad boy off here and take a look and see what we have. Some of this stuff I'll probably remember. Some of it I might not. So it looks like this is a Game Boy Advance charger. Kind of cool. Alright, so this thing here, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, it's a Tiger Electronics Pokédex. This thing was like super cool to have. It was like the key to being a Pokémon Master back in the 90s. It actually still turns on, which is crazy. What are the odds? Yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Wow. Alright, so up next, this thing. When I was a kid, I used to collect Beanie Babies. I don't know why, but I did. Um, this, I, I don't know how I managed to not rip off this tag, but this is the 1999 Signature Bear, which is wild. I don't know if this thing is worth money. Seems like it's in pretty decent shape. Right here we just have another random Beanie Baby. I must have actually liked this one a lot <laughs> because it is pretty much destroyed and has no tag. This... This is cool. I don't have this game, but I still have the manual from when I had it as a kid. The first time I played Jade Cocoon was when I was maybe 13 or 14. My grandfather passed away and I was living in Arkansas at the time and we actually came back to Michigan for his funeral and I ran into one of my cousins who had Jade Cocoon and we played it like non-stop for like almost an entire weekend and then I ended up buying my own copy later on really really cool game I think that the art is by Studio Ghibli or whatever I don't know Really cool game. I want to get another copy and actually play it on the channel. This right here is an old Game Boy Color carrying case. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we've got some cassette tapes here. These. Oh. These are from. Uh, high school band we uh, once a year we would do like a, sort of a competition where we went and played and were judged by music professors at like a big college kind of cool kind of kind of fun lots of memories all right hey you Pikachu that was an awesome game hours and hours of fun with this game way back in the day. And then we also have, this is like a, the, a Pokédex, but it's like a Digi, Digi-Dex. I don't know, It's it probably doesn't work anymore, it's not turning on, and uh, there used to be like a little cover here, like a little flap thing. That also appears to be history. I found some unlabeled Read-writable CDs, that's kind of scary. God only knows what's on them. This one is labeled Halo 4 2012 1080p. 
I have no idea what that could even be. Alright, so this right here was from back in my Yu-Gi-Oh days. Whenever you... I, I'm pretty sure that this was like a starter deck. And you bought it, and it came in this cool little tin. Kind of interesting. No idea what all this is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. This thing here caught my eye. This is... From a, from a Gundam action figure. There were like these little things and they would sit in the bottom of the plastic package. And like the Gundam would be standing right here. I don't know why I kept this. I, I could not tell you, but uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool nonetheless. This is a random Digimon card, but it's like a tin. I don't know if there might be more of these in here. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. All right, so there's something in here labeled Square Enix. Oh, that's got a bunch of personal info on it. I think this is one of those things that you mailed out to get some kind of promotional material. I'm not sure. Square Enix USA, P.O. Box 6000, Clear Lake, Minnesota. What the hell is Square Enix doing with an office in Minnesota? All right, so this is, this is, this is pretty cool. There is actually a Gundam card game that I forget even exists and I have no idea how to play it. So up next, play mat that you are supposed to play on. And I think this is actually only half of it. <laughs> I don't know where the other half went. One of those things, man, I never, uh, as a kid, no one else I knew was into Gundam. So I never got a chance to actually play this but it was probably really cool. Let me know if you guys have played it. This is a Pokemon trading card game rule book. I was pretty awesome at the Pokemon. Oh my God, what the heck? I have two of them, apparently. Starter rules and regular rules. I was a whiz kid at the Pokemon trading card game. I was, I actually used to go to a Pokemon league back in Arkansas when I was a kid and I was, Pretty much undefeated. It was a lot of fun. Made a lot of cool friends. So look how much like detail and care they put into even just like a rule book. Like you have like a shot of Professor Oak, all the hand drawn Pokemon. Now speaking of the Pokemon League I was just talking about, this was my water season license. You got one of these like I think like once a month. It was like a new season that like focused on a different element. Yeah, so <clears throat> I actually, I had a char, I had a Charizard Pokemon card and I actually gave it to our gym leader and she said she was gonna list it on eBay and sell it. And she gave me a couple of cards of hers to hold on to as like collateral. And uh, needless to say, I never heard anything back about my Charizard being sold. And then shortly thereafter, they actually disbanded the league Never, never to be seen again. So I lost to Charizard. I got, uh, got hoodwinked by my gym leader. Ridiculous, huh? There's another one of those tapes. So what are these? They're like cards, but they're like stickers. Let's see if I can get one of these out of here. Okay, yeah, so those are stickers. Pokemon tops. Oh yeah, I like that back. Wait a second. Yeah, it like makes a puzzle. I never completed it though, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, somehow they make a puzzle. And then there's also these other weird, I remember these. like I don't know what the purpose of these are or like where this came from or how you got these but like you know if you weren't cool enough to have a Charizard you could like get one of these and be like hey guys I got a Charizard look at me yeah weird really interesting then of course I've got a couple of rare Digimon cards here I have no idea if these are worth money I know Metal Greymon is kind of popular Seems like it's in alright shape. Probably not though. 
Dragon Ball Z cards. Holographic Piccolo. I, again, just like those other weird Pokemon cards, I have no idea what these are for. What does this say? Piccolo is disappointed by Gohan's lack of will, but now the Earth's future depends upon the incredible power potential Gohan has within him. So I think these trading cards just kind of followed like the story of the anime. Another weird variation of a Pokemon card. Don't know what this is for, or what it does, or how popular these were. It's got these weird little ridges on it. It's so strange. Yeah, so a lot of those weird variations of cards and like those Dragon Ball Z cards, I'm pretty sure I got those when I was uh, in a foster home when I was a kid, back before I ever moved to Arkansas. So this is the Pokemon the First Movie soundtrack. I still have it. Let's see how, how beat up the disc is. It's actually not too bad. Could use a clean... What is this? Ancient Mew details. Name of attack, hit points, attack damage, retreat cost. What can Ancient Mew do? Puzzled by the other side of this card, go to the Pokemon trading card game TCG League near you to find out what the Ancient Mew can do. Correctly fill in the blanks at your TCG League location, then take home an exclusive Ancient Mew playmat poster Earn League Points, too. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna kind of set that aside. We might... Might have to uh, unravel a, a mystery from my childhood. There's another Pokemon rule book. I must have, like, carried these with me everywhere I went. Anytime someone did something, I'm like, Did you read the rules? Alright, so up next is this, this NES game called Dragon Power. I actually did not know I even had a copy of this. I remember playing it at some point. But it's called Dragon Power, but this is actually a Dragon Ball NES game. The character's name is Goku, you meet Master Roshi, you meet Bulma. But you wouldn't guess any of that based on the, the cover art, but kind of a weird common thing that happened with, uh, with NES games and Super Nintendo games back in the day. All right, it looks like we have another high school band cassette tape. Weird. Yeah, I have a lot of those for some reason. All right, so right here we got some of those those gold-plated Pokemon cards from Burger King. Super cool. I have three of them here. Two Pikachus and a Mewtwo. Mewtwo's in some kind of a case. <laughs> Half of a case, anyway. Kind of cool. These are really, really banged up. But let's see if we can pick up that text. What's it say? I don't know. Interesting, interesting stuff. Thank you, Burger King. These things were so popular back in the day. It's unreal. Oh, back in you go. Scratch it up the rest of the way. All right. All right, so this is an instruction booklet from the Game Boy game. Yeah, it is. Look at that. It's freaking crazy, man. I've had this little little booklet since I was seven years old. I don't know. I'm really surprised a lot of this stuff survived. All right, what is this? A Pokemon game card just for you. Send in this card for an exclusive Jigglypuff card for the Pokemon trading card game. Look on the back of this card for more details. More of that Pokemon League stuff. It's so weird. So between this and whatever, you get some kind of a, a game mat. Probably some rare stuff I could have got when I was a kid. All right, so up next we've got, this must be like, yeah, this is probably what the game mat that this was talking about. This is probably one of those. I don't believe that this is anything rare though. My God, it's so huge. Look at this thing. It's massive. It's just basically like, you know, for you and your opponent to play against each other. 
just a little mat. Keep everything nice and organized. All right, there's a whole bunch, whole bunch more of these cassette tapes from high school band. And what is this? Gotta catch them all. Number 103, Executor. Okay, it's one another one of those cards that's like a little puzzle. It's a little switchblade for if a bully tried to steal my Pokemon cards back in the day. Another knife? Oh my god, I was a crazy kid. <laughs> crazy, what was I doing with these knives? Whoa, I almost knocked the camera over. Here's another knife. A little baby knife. Oh my god, another knife. <laughs> this this video is taking a really dark turn. I can't get that one to open. A Harpy Girl Yu-Gi-Oh card. I tried to build a Harpy deck one time. Thunder Nyan Nyan, I remember that. Fiber Jar. I don't even know. I was pretty pretty into Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, if I were to rank myself as a duelist, I would probably rank myself a Joey Wheeler. I was never really that great. A friend of mine was like ridiculously good at the game, but I don't know. I don't know. Just never really committed to it that much, I guess. So another holographic weird Charizard card. Okay, so these things, these are really cool. I used to have this Pokemon board game where you would, you were like a trainer and there was a whole big map. It, it was kind of like uh, Monopoly, sort of. And it was like a map of Kanto and you would travel across the land <laughs> searching far and wide and catching Pokemon. And these were the little Pokemon. And you get like a starter. And I think like that was their hit points, and then this number down there was their attack. So you'd get a starter Pokemon, you would roll your dice, move so many spaces, and you might run into a wild Pokemon, you might, you know, do enough, roll, roll a high enough number to actually make it from like a town to another town. And you just kept going around the board, and eventually you could go to the Elite Four. It's a really, really, really cool game. Alright, so this, this is cool. Pokemon... Pokemon Marbles? Who knew that that was a thing? It's your regular run-of-the-mill marbles, but then they have little Pokemon on them. And we got a Snorlax. Cloyster. A Jinx. A uh, Golduck? And then a big old Chansey. And then a, <laughs> a regular marble. Let's see what else. We got some more in here. Oh my god, we got a lot more. Dratini or Drag Dragonite? Dragonair? Porygon? Diglett? No idea if you guys are able to see these. It's a regular marble. Another regular marble. Oh, that's a cloister. And a lapras. Looks like yet another cassette tape from high school band. What is this thing? Into our third century with Carter. <laughs> what the fuck? I have this random Jimmy Carter, the peanut man, little medallion. Into our third century with Carter. What is it even supposed to mean? It's so strange. All right, so we are almost through the whole box. It's another one of those Pokemon things from that board game I was talking about. Purple guitar pick. Okay, I'm gonna try to capture this on camera. 
one of these these little flips things. They were so cool. They like showed the evolution of uh, the evolution evolutionary forms of your Pokemon or whatever. Super cool. Be cool to have some more of these. What is this? Oh man. This is like a little poster with all of the first 150 Pokemon. This is old, old school, man. OG Pokemon, right there. Yep. That is all of them. Cool. Right on. I don't even... <laughs> Just like with most of this stuff, I don't know where this came from. Back in the late 90s, there was, a, there was Pokemon everything. Everything you could imagine. Everything that could be sold. There was a Pokemon version of it. It's a finger pick. What is this? An, Aer <laughs> An Aerodactyl? I, it's holographic. I don't think this was part of that board game. So I have no idea. It's too small to be a pog. So, who knows. There's another... <laughs> Another guitar pick and a little dust bunny that just went flying. Another one of those Digimon plated tin cards. There's like an actual card inside there and it's like trapped in this little tin. Super weird. Another, another one of those <laughs> Gundam action figure inserts that I kept as a kid. Don't know why. Include shield, buster rifle, and beam sword. All right, so as you can see, we've got a big old pile of cards here. Probably just uh, go through some of these real quick and then sort through them and see if I have anything of interest. It's an Ivysaur, weird Pokemon card that I don't understand what it is for. A Mr. Mime, which is, it's like these, po these two cards, like you can tell that they are not the same product, but I don't know what, <laughs> There's just so many different kinds of Pokemon cards, it's crazy. Brock's Lickitung. Some more of these weird Pokemon cards that I don't understand. Ivysaur, Ivysaur, I, I have three Ivysaurs and a Wartortle. The hell, what is this? Oh, <laughs> Duel Masters. I remember these. This is like some super generic knockoff of like Yu-Gi-Oh that nobody played at all, but I mean they look kind of cool. Got some interesting art going on. Engineer Engineer Kipo. This is a uh, another weird Pokémon card. I think that these came out with the uh, Pokémon the first movie. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. Mewtwo Strikes Back. Yeah, so these 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 were like some kind of promotional card to show off Pokemon the first movie. These are both scenes from that movie. <laughs> Alright, so the rest of these I'm going to just sift through and if I find anything interesting I will I will let you guys know. This Caterpie right here, I love this Caterpie. It looks so weird. Like, I, I don't know if it's a toy sitting in actual grass or what, you know? It's like, it looks almost too good to be CG animation. So I'm thinking it's a toy and that's a photo. Here's something interesting. A Japanese Pokemon card. I can't remember the name of this monster, but I thought it was really cool as a kid finding these Japanese cards. I used to I used to have a I think a German Hitmon Hitmon top. Hitmon Lee. Yeah, kinda cool. Found another Japanese card, an EV. The back of these is really cool. Totally different than a North American card. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that already, but in case you didn't know, that's what a Japanese Pokemon card looks like on the back. So just to kind of give you an idea um, of how old these cards are. 
these are this is from like the jungle and fossil expansion packs or whatever so these are like these are og pokemon cards like they don't get any older than this if i had some more some more holographics <laughs> i would totally be looking in to see how much this like little collection might be worth um it's really kind of hit or miss with pokemon cards you know like some cards they claim to be worth so much money, but it's it really just depends on, you know, you have to find someone that actually wants to buy them. So they might be worth a lot, but that doesn't mean there's customers everywhere, if that makes sense. But yeah, these are all... I do have some newer cards like this, but I mean, even this is like ancient nowadays. This is like, uh, yeah, second generation, I think. I don't know, it's been so long since I've paid any attention to Pokemon, to be honest. Here's a whole bunch of old trainer cards. Gambler, Potion, Super Potion, Potion. That image of a potion has been like permanently burned into my mind. Anytime I think of a potion, that is what I imagine. Recycle, Mr. Fuji, Item Finder, Mysterious Fossil. Another, <laughs> it's another one of those weird knockoff Yu-Gi-Oh cards that no one liked. Great Spirit. What is this? Neko Gal number one. This is a, kind of another old school thing. Dark Pokemon. These were like Pokemon that were uh, Team Rockets. You can see the little R in the uh, bottom right corner right there. I don't know if that's still a thing nowadays. Uh, Japanese Marowak. Kind of cool. Oh, and Gym, gym Leader Pokemon. Also don't know if that's still a thing. Lieutenant Surge's Mag Magnemite. It's kind of cool. You could like, you could like build a party of just uh, gym leader Pokemon. Look at that Metapod. Freaking cool. That art, I love it. Lieutenant Surge's Treaty. Yeah, there were even uh, gym leader trainer cards. Japanese Cyndaquil. Alright, so this trainer card I have no idea what it does. I don't know if they ever released this in the U.S. Um, but Misty is not wearing a shirt. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Just some weird thing I noticed when I was a kid. There's another one. I have two of them. Pewter City Gym. Sprout Tower. Gust of wind. Look at look at uh, Weedle. He looks he looks so he looks like he's having a hard time there. Yeah. So weird misty card with with no shirt on. So weird. I don't. Yeah. I I'd, I'd have to look up and see if this this trainer card was ever in English. I don't think I've ever seen it before. This is what a Pokemon looks like when it uh, doesn't survive through the 90s. Yeah, that Doug Trio has seen better days. Time to take him to Lavender Tower. It does not get much more old school than this. A Bill Trainer card. That is like, that is like the first trainer card anyone ever got. Just another quick shot of some really old stuff. Persian, a palm. That was second gen. Centret, second gen. Metal Energy or Steel. Me yeah, Metal Energy. That's second gen. Misty Star Me, Misty Star You. Another one of these. Oh my goodness, man. Misty Star You. Misty's Goldeen. I have a lot of Misty stuff. Really old Spiro card. Super Rod, Gust of Wind again. Lots of common, lots of common stuff here. But at least it's all like that original first generation of Pokemon cards, you know? That has to count for something. Goldeen. Exeggutor. Staryu, Poliwhirl. Yeah, you guys get the idea. Of course, I gotta show off this super old school Pikachu. I think this was like the original Pikachu card. I could be wrong, there's a couple different versions. There's a jungle version, a fossil version. And then I think just like the original, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, if I find one I'll show. 
Some more Misty goodness. We have Misty's Tears, Misty's Duel, Misty's Wrath. I'm pretty sure I had a crush on Misty when I was a kid. Not 100% sure, but it's based on the evidence I keep finding. Very well could be true. Ah, this, I think this is the original Pikachu Pokemon card. Yeah, because it's not fossil, it's not jungle, it's just Pikachu. <laughs> That's it. I bet you this is the original Pikachu Pokemon card. So that was basically it for the Pokemon cards. Most of them were just, you know, your very common run-of-the-mill cards. But they were like that very first initial set of Pokemon cards. <laughs> and then I also found these more of these weird Pokemon the first movie things. Another holographic Digimon card. Neko Gale number one. I found two of these actually. Another one of these fake Yu-Gi-Oh knockoff cards. Great Spirit. Another Pokemon the first movie card. Some more of these weird things. A Blastoise and a Venusaur. Wish I knew more about what these were. Pokemon the first movie card. More of these weird things. That is basically it. I have a lot of these Pokemon the first movie things. Alright, so as you can tell, the box is basically empty now. We do have a little uh, Pokemon Pikachu. This was like a Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi? From back in the day, but it was a, it was a Pikachu that was uh, in there. You could feed him and stuff. Highly doubt this thing will ever work again. I don't know. I could pop it open and see if it maybe would turn on with a new battery, but I probably don't have the right kind of batteries. So, maybe one day. This is a PS2 memory card. This is my original PS2 memory card from when I was a kid. There's... It, the internal, internal clock and battery and stuff is probably dead, but if not, it would be super cool to pop it in and see if anything is still there. Okay, so I do want to come back to this thing. As soon as I seen this, I remembered when I was a kid, I stuck these in here. And I'm pretty sure we've got some cool stuff in here. Okay, yup. Egyptian Mew. A Charizard, a holographic Wigglytuff, and a holographic Magneton. So these Egyptian Mews, I actually used to have three of these. And I gave one to a friend of mine that I made when I went to I went to a high school in a town called Ironwood um, for a short time. <laughs> and I made a friend. His name was Nico. And I actually gave him one of these cards. And like immediately after I gave one to him, like this group of bullies came up to him and like beat the crap out of him and like pushed him down this hill and he went rolling down it. The poor dude, as soon as he got up, the first thing he did is he checked to see <laughs> if his Egyptian Mew was okay. And of course, it was totally smashed and crumpled up. Which sucks, but... Kind of funny at the same time. Charizard. Second edition. I used to have a couple of these, too. I remember I gave one to a girl that I had a crush on at the Pokemon League I mentioned earlier. Yeah, she did not become my girlfriend, but that's okay. She got a Charizard out of it, so good for her. There's something behind this Wigglytuff. Okay. Misty's Golduck and second edition Holographic Gyarados. I don't know why I have all these Misty cards, man. I, I must have had some kind of complex when I was a kid. Second edition Clefairy. Cool. Oh, and a holographic German Nakchan. That is sweet. Yeah, so that's it for holographics. I used to have, used to have quite a bit more than these, but I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. It's been so long. Now these Egyptian Mews, I'm pretty sure these were given out at, um, for Pokemon the first movie. If anyone out there can read Egyptian, let me know if that is actually Egyptian writing. Yeah, so back to uh, to this Pokemon League. This is my trainer's license. You can see my horrible handwriting with my name. Something kind of cool that I remember is you could actually you tally up points for each time you win a duel against another Pokemon card trainer. 
And you can actually get like special Pokemon League promo cards, which is really cool. I think I might have to look up online and see what all different variants there were compared to like just like your regular Pokemon cards, I guess. Kind of cool. So that is everything I still have from my Pokemon days. I'm grateful to still have all this stuff after all these years. I'm a sentimental kind of guy and this stuff is like a bridge to my childhood. One day, randomly, without a chance to even say goodbye to my friends, I moved halfway across the country. This was back before the internet kept us all connected, and despite having the ability, I've never tried reconnecting with those old friends. Maybe I'm scared they won't remember me. But that's okay, we share some of the greatest memories a kid could have, and that's all thanks to Pokemon. But that's a video for another day. To those of you that made it this far, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for lending an ear, and listening to my stories, and letting me share my memories. I will catch you guys in the next one.